Hello, friends and family from around the world. This is Mike with Daily Events Worldwide, and we are on May 26th, 2025. Welcome to another surviving day on the planet, and welcome to the Daily Do, giving your live space weather update as we are live looking at our sun for the past 48 hours at 304 angstroms. We did see another strong C-class solar flare today. There has been multiple solar flare events. We saw two uh, strong M-class solar flares, four more M flares, and as well the X1 flare from the other day. It's been very active. Sunspot regions outgoing and as well incoming. Big fiery sunspot right here, turning away. And as well, all of this activity turning into view, there are some very large sunspot regions. We'll have a look at multi-spectrum. As there is still that large coronal hole turning away, but another pretty complex coronal hole stretching from the north to the south across the equator. Big plasma filament action here along the equator. Amazing images brought to you by Solar Dynamics Observatory. Produced here with daily events worldwide. Thank you so much for pressing play today. This is a look at our sun for the past 48 hours. As well, I wanted to show you the sunspot regions as they are pretty big turning into view. These are the earth facing sunspot regions right now. Here is the active sunspot that produced two strong M class solar flares. And then turning into view here, right along the equator, you can see this big stretched out black dot. That is a very big sunspot region turning into view. Stay tuned as we will try to give you full details in a regular update, just like as we normally do. But right now having some issues and thank you so much for your patience and loyalty with the channel. Having a look at our magnetosphere, this is showing the pressure as we were just get hit again by some intense solar winds. Solar winds are right now coming in at 423 kilometers per second. Here's a look at the solar X-ray flux. As you can see, two strong M-class solar flares and about eight C-class solar flares. Proton flux is low. Geomagnetic activity hopping up to a KP3 today. And here is a look at our space weather spiral showing the space weather prediction for the next four days as we're still being affected by this intense coronal hole wind stream and another one getting ready to bombard our planet so stay buckled up everybody stay safe and healthy aware and prepared out there have a quick look at the aurora view line for tonight and tomorrow tomorrow night we can definitely expect a geostorm as you can see there's definitely going to be a visible aurora across the northern hemisphere this is due to the incoming coronal hole that pretty complex equatorial region coronal hole which i was talking about will be earth facing Also wanted to show you, of course, Alaska 3, showing the wide spectrum, a look at the last three days of cosmic energies leaving our sun. There was a halo CME from the Earth-facing solar flares. Not sure which one it was, but we did get an Earth-facing blast. Coronal mass ejections on its way, not in the models that were just shown. We've also got Venus coming into view on the right-hand side here. Getting ready for a retrograde. Now let's get to earthquakes past 24 hours. As we just recently, we saw a 5.1 earthquake in Greece. Nowhere near where we've seen all the action towards Santorini. This is more on land. 5.1 earthquake just reported. As well, a notable earthquake is Valbard, actually three of them here, ranging from 4.2 to 4.7. Notable activity, Petrolia, California, off the coast of California. 
Hawaii seeing yet another volcanic eruption, its 23rd since Christmas Eve last year. Notable earthquakes in Japan, as well as Marianas Trench, 5.2. Have a look at USGS, as right now they are reporting Two, or 190, 189 earthquakes, sorry, in the last 24 hours. Notable earthquake across the United States, 2.1, Loudoun, Tennessee. As well, Oklahoma, minor seismicity. Earthquakes all around Dominican Republic. And again, just recently, 5.1, Antikyra, Greece at a 10 kilometer depth. Pretty quiet for earthquakes, considering normally our average is about 200 to 225. We're sitting at 189 right now and have been under that all day long. A lot of pressure being released with the eruption at Kilauea Volcano. If you haven't seen it, please look on YouTube, search USDS Kilauea Volcano live stream, and you'll be able to see yesterday's events. It was quite a fantastic volcanic eruption. Kilauea Volcano putting on quite a show since last Christmas Eve. This is a look at Volcano Discovery showing all the active and erupting volcanoes. There are no new ones that have erupted, but some notable activity building up in Iceland as we've got yet another volcano showing signs of unrest. Hecla. Ow. And as well, Katla, Sparzengi, and as well, Bartabunga, the volcano, probably the largest volcano on the planet under an ice sheet. Amazing stuff. Thanks, everybody, for watching today. Let's have a quick look at our sulfur dioxide emissions forecast. As I don't think the plume from the Kilauea volcano has been put into these models yet. It was a pretty large volcanic eruption and a lot of SO2 and particulates were released into our atmosphere. This is a forecast showing the next few days overlooking the North Pacific. Big eruption there, Kilauea, of course, volcanoes through Mexico, Guatemala, and Ecuador. Interesting sulfur dioxide emissions coming out of the New Madrid. And as well up in Manitoba, Saskatchewan, where there are some nasty wildfires up there. Just have a look at satellite imagery overlooking Manitoba and Saskatchewan today. About a dozen wildfires breaking out across Saskatchewan. Manitoba being inundated by very thick wildfire smoke. Very dry conditions all across the Canadian prairies right now. See these black dots here? This is uh, satellite imagery during the night. So this is showing the intense heat blobs at the wildfire areas. You can see there's about 10 wildfires right there. Four of them are very big. Evacuation orders have been placed to surrounding communities. So Thoughts and prayers going out to everybody affected by the wildfires in Saskatchewan, Manitoba. And thank you, all you Canadian viewers. Keep caring and sharing. Now let's have a look at world weather. Try to get a uh, forecast here, forecast models. Start out overlooking North America as that low pressure system is finally going to move away from the eastern part of North America. High pressure ridge moving in and some very warm temperatures, of course, from the Canadian prairies and as well western United States will be eventually stretching across North America. High pressure ridge clear until about Wednesday or Thursday. Next low pressure system scoots in from the Gulf of Mexico. Interesting cold low pressure system comes out of the Hudson Bay. That will be a cold event for Ontario, Northern Ontario. 
Very strong winds and possible snowy conditions for Quebec, parts of Newfoundland in the long range. Right up until June 3rd here, we could see some snow in the long range forecast eastern Canada. That's right, I said snow, the S word. By that time, there will be a pretty strong system on the other side of the world, affecting eastern parts of Australia, and then roaring to New, New Zealand. And that most likely will have quite a snow event there. Higher elevations, seeing a lot of snow with that big system. Other than that, we, were, we don't really have any cyclones, hurricanes, or typhoons forecast here in the long range. I want to thank you all for watching and pressing play today. Thank you for subscribing. Thank you for all the memberships. And I apologize that I haven't been able to update over the last few days, but it's been pretty crazy. Um, my live stream, there's, as I said, there's some sneaky snakes out there that can do some pretty crazy stuff on computers. And I've had to safeguard myself and change my passwords and my profiles. Even daily events worldwide on YouTube was compromised. So please. Again, thank you for your love and patience here on the channel. We'll see you for the next update. But one more thing I want to show you. Upper level winds. I always like to show our polar vortex. These are showing the upper level winds of our, of our world right now. Southern Hemisphere 2025. There's our deep, strong polar vortex. Some of the winds in the upper level wind stream are coming in at 350 kilometers an hour. Now, this is last year's polar vortex at this time in the southern hemisphere. Much smaller and definitely not as strong. About 286 kilometers per hour in the upper level winds. Now, we've seen about 10 large coronal hole events affect our planet over this past month from our sun. Thank you very much, our sun. And look at our solar, our upper level winds, thanks to all of these solar wind events, increasing the winds on our planet, quite possibly maybe even increasing the speed and rotation of our planet. Who knows? But it's definitely affecting our upper level winds. Look at last year on the right hand side and this year, left hand side. Notice the direction of the winds in the equatorial region right here. And then this year, 2025, going in the completely opposite direction. Very interesting days indeed. Thanks everybody.